Good morning. I welcome you as we gather on this third, or actually fourth Sunday of Epiphany. And kudos to everyone who managed to make it here to the sanctuary this morning. We also welcome those who are joining us live via the tech. And I give thanks to Andy Graham, who is filling in and doing the tech this morning. The altar flowers this morning are given in memory of Durwood Hughes with love by his family. And I know that our Minister of Discipleship has at least one announcement. Good morning. Good morning. We have begun to get videos that were left over from our Ask the Pastor with the children last week. Please continue to send those in. The first one has been posted on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram as the first episode of our Kids Corner. So check that out. We're hoping to have them for you going forward during the service. So stay tuned for that. Also, we invite all children and young at heart, whether members of the church or the wider community, to join us in a snowman building competition. It does not have to be a snowman. It can be a woman or a child or a family or a dragon or a snow fort, whatever you would like to create. And then we will um, accept photo submissions via Facebook, Instagram, and email until Wednesday. And then we will vote and give out some um, gift cards to Richardson's because even when it's cold, New Englanders love their ice cream. Um, so please send those in. We would love to have lots and lots of submissions of wonderful snow creations. Thank you. I have an idea for my snowman, but I won't be an official contestant. And the response has been amazing. We had last night when I checked about 1,200 views of this post. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody and their creativity. The Youth Ministries Operation Close line was obviously postponed yesterday because of the storm. They will be heading into the Boston Common next Saturday. We'll gather here at the church at 9 o'clock. Those who are in the youth group will be joining us also if they're members of the church youth who have not been attending but would like to participate in Operation Clothesline. You're welcome to do that. We will be heading into Boston to distribute the warm clothing to homeless people in and around the common. And uh, I'm happy to announce that we are now up to 157 warm pairs of wool socks, 27 hats, 22 pairs of gloves and scarves, and we thank you all for your generous giving. Also, a reminder that our newly elected council members will be installed during the service of worship on February 13th. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near and rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. join me in the call to worship. Let us draw near to God. And may the love that was in Christ Jesus be in us also. 
the love that is patient and kind. The love that is not jealous or boastful. The love that bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. And endures all things. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. God, whose glory can be seen each and every day with the rising of the sun, we come to you in the light of this day to follow the one who is the light of the world. So in this time of joyful song and sacred silence, let your spirit touch our hearts with the grace that makes all things new and our minds with the truth that will set us free to be like him in all that we say and do. This we ask as we humbly give you thanks and say together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. We give thanks to God for the blessings of this day, the blessings that we have received each and every day. Let us come now to God's altar with humble and grateful hearts, with our tithes and our offerings.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. We come to your altar, Lord, with an offering of gratitude for your love that came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. May the gifts that we dedicate now with humble hearts allow the light of Christ to shine more brightly for all to see. This we ask as we continue to follow the one in whom you were well pleased. Amen. So anyone who drives by the parsonage knows that there are two big bay windows in the front. And what you will see in those bay windows is some stained glass. And I'm a big fan. I, I love stained glass, the beauty of it. And of course, one of the things that makes the stained glass wonderful and beautiful to look at is you have light shining, and it brings out the colors in the stained glass. Obviously, we don't have flashlights that shine through. We have the sun. So I'm going to show you, with the help of Gail, some of the stained glass. This actually is not in the front windows, but see, it looks awful dark, but when it's in the window and the sun shines through, it is really beautiful. And then this next one is one that I actually like this. It has sentimental value to me. This I gave as a Christmas present to my parents many years ago, and they were bird watchers. They loved watching the birds. And so this is actually hanging in the opening from the kitchen to the living room at the parsonage. And then this last one you will see in the front window of the parsonage. And we have some irises. And again, when the light shines through it, it's absolutely beautiful. I also have some smaller stained glass. Thank you, Gail. And these first two are hanging in the windows of my office here at the church. And these are very special because they were made by Helen Bigham. Helen Bigham longtime member of our church, used to make the stained glass and sell it at Frosty's Fair. This obviously is what? This is a stained glass of our church. And then you also have this one. And again, Helen Bigham made these ones. And that's in my office window. And it's Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus in the stable. This one I put in the window at the parsonage at Christmas time, and Helen Bigham made this too, some holly. And one of the other reasons why I like stained glass is because it reminds me of what we're supposed to do when we follow Jesus. 
So just as the sun shines through the stained glass and makes it look beautiful, we let the light that is in our hearts, the light as the love that is in our hearts of Jesus shine for all to see. And when that happens and we let that love shine, it's beautiful. And we can do that through the things that we say. So when you go to someone and you tell them they're doing a good job or you compliment them, that's letting the love shine in your heart for all to see. And we also let the light of that love in our heart shine for all to see when we do something nice for someone. And this big snowstorm that we had yesterday got me thinking about that. And how many like the snow? I like it, yeah. Actually, it's interesting, more people raised their hands than didn't. But it made me think, so my parents lived in the house that I grew up in, down on the South Shore, a little town called Whitman. And they were getting older, my father was retired, and they were in their late 70s and early 80s. When they got a big storm, the neighbor across the street would always come out with his snowblower, and he would clear my parents' driveway because he and his wife didn't want my elderly parents shoveling or using the snowblower. And I was always very grateful for them to do that. And that's what it means when you let the light and the love shine for all to see. Let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this day and we pray that the love that is in our hearts will let it shine for all to see through the things that we say to others that are nice and the things that we do for others that are nice. In doing that, we know that we will feel joy too because we'll be just like Jesus. Amen. be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Let us lift up our hearts to the Lord. Let us uh, give thanks and enter into this time of sacred silence.
good people, are there prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? I have a few here this morning. First of all, we pray for Jody Falk, uh, who is the sister of Gail McLaughlin's friend Christopher. Jody is awaiting a leg amputation following an infection and certainly a traumatic turn of events for her and her family. We lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in your goodness, we continue to pray for Cooper Carosa. He's a three-year-old little boy who has childhood cancer, and he will be heading to Children's Hospital down in Tennessee. Family is friends with Meredith Turner. We ask that God be with Cooper and his family. Lord, in your goodness, we also continue to pray for Mary Lou Harrison as she continues to recover from her fall and ask God's healing and strength to be on her. Lord, in your goodness, we pray as well for all those on our prayer list in the Hilltop News and ask God to be with all of them. Lord, in your goodness. The Hastings family is thankful for the beautiful and relaxing music to help diffuse any worries of the storm. So we thank God for the gift of music and for Horatio, who is playing for us today. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Janet Akoja is requesting prayers for her friend Jennifer, who was just diagnosed with breast cancer. So we ask for God's grace and healing upon Jennifer and all of her loved ones. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Diane Downing is requesting prayers for her cousin Ricky, who is on oxygen and a wait list for a lung transplant, yet still came to shovel out her driveway twice yesterday. So we lift up Ricky and all of his loved ones and ask for strength and healing during this time. Lord, in your goodness. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, you have heard the prayers of your sons and daughters, both those that we have uttered this day and those that we hold close in our hearts. We give you thanks for your presence that is with us every moment of every day. As we continue to shovel out and Deal with the blizzard of yesterday. We lift up in prayer all those who may be without power, who are struggling, and ask that your spirit be with them. Eternal one, we give you thanks for the wisdom, the grace, the peace that passes all understanding, and especially the strength that we need for the living of these days, for truly these are extraordinary times. And we ask that you fan the embers of love in all of our hearts so that we might show forth a love that is patient and kind, a love that is not jealous or boastful, a love that is not arrogant or rude, Good and gracious uh, God, let that love be there that makes it possible for us to believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. All this we ask as faithful disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
This morning's reading from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians is known as the love chapter. In the passage, Paul shares with us an inspiring definition of what love is and what it isn't. The reason why he wrote those words to the Corinthians is because they were full of a self-serving kind of love. That could be seen in their competing with one another when it came to speaking in tongues. The Corinthians were essentially showing off to each other, and so Paul made it clear to them that when your heart is full of the love that you see in Jesus, you are more interested in serving than showing off. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Here ends the reading of the word. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts upon the sacred scripture be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It was undoubtedly one of the most difficult weddings I ever had to officiate. Now, ministers will tell you that sometimes a wedding is challenging because you have a photographer who doesn't want to follow the rules when it comes to taking pictures during the ceremony. Sometimes a wedding is challenging because you have a mother who wants to micromanage everything. In this case, however, the wedding wasn't challenging because of a photographer or the mother of the bride or groom. The wedding was challenging because all of the groomsmen were state troopers. And during the rehearsal, I quickly discovered that state troopers don't like being told what to do. They like telling you what to do. So just about everything I said and did was questioned. Finally, after several minutes of a passive-aggressive behavior, I decided that enough was enough, and I gathered the state troopers together. Gentlemen, I said, this rehearsal and this wedding will go a lot better if you just remember one thing. In this sanctuary, I'm the law. Now, to be fair, state troopers aren't the only ones who don't like being told what to do. People in general don't like to be told what to do. The pandemic has made that painfully obvious. 
Maybe that's why this past week I found myself focusing on one particular verse in this morning's reading. In the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he tells us what love is and what love isn't. And then he wrote these words. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. Well, unfortunately, you don't have to look very far these days to see adults behaving in childish ways. For example, did you hear what Amelia King said? Amelia King lives in Virginia. And at a school board meeting where they were trying to decide if staff and students were going to wear masks, she got up and this is what she said. No mask mandates. My children will not come to school on Monday with a mask on. That's not happening. And I will bring every single gun loaded and ready. As soon as Amelia King got home, she immediately went on social media and said that when she made that statement, she was speaking figuratively. Well, a local sheriff wasn't amused, and now Amelia King is going to tell it to a judge. When I was a child, I thought like a child, I spoke like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. Or how about Christine, I'm trying to remember her last name, Christine Darling. She was arrested and charged with a hate crime when she walked up to an eight-year-old Jewish boy outside a synagogue in Brooklyn. And after she spit on him, she said to the boy and his friends, Hitler should have killed you all. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. Shane McInerney is also in hot water after he threw a tantrum on a flight from Dublin to New York. When he was told that he had to wear a mask, he threw an empty beverage can at another passenger. Then he dropped his pants and mooned a flight attendant. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. Or how about the Michigan judge who gave a 72-year-old cancer patient a hard time for not doing a better job maintaining his yard? During the Zoom hearing, the cancer patient, Brahan Chowdhury, struggled to breathe as he told uh, Judge Alexis Crott that because of the cancer, he was very weak. That didn't matter to uh, the judge who then said, if I could give you jail time for this, I would. She later apologized. Even so, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I gave up childish ways. Good people. All of these examples of adults behaving in childish ways occurred over the last week or so. And you know what's really scary? I didn't have to work very hard to find them. As I was reading my daily newspaper, I came across at least a dozen other examples that were just as bad or worse. 
Now that's not the way the good Lord wants Amelia King, Christine Darling, Shane McEnany, and Judge Alexis Crott to live their lives. That's not the way the good Lord wants any of us to live our lives. That's why it is so important, especially these days, to follow Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. When you do that, your heart will be filled with the love that the Apostle Paul talked about in his letter to the Corinthians. Your heart will be filled with a love that is patient and kind, a love that is not jealous or boastful, a love that is not arrogant or rude. And with everything that's going on these days, most important of all, your heart will be filled with a love that doesn't always insist on its own way. That's the key right there. In our narcissistic society where it's all about me and what I want, the love of Christ leads you to understand that you don't always insist on your own way. That there are times, plenty of times, when love says you do what's best for someone else. You do what someone else wants. You do what someone else needs. Now you and I know that's easy to do that when the other person is your three-year-old son who's sick or your 86-year-old mother who's beginning to get a little forgetful or your best friend who's always, always been there for you. It's harder to do that when you don't know the other person or you don't like the other person. It's harder to do that when the other person's skin isn't the same color as yours or the other person speaks a different language because they came from another country. Love doesn't always insist on its own way. And yes, it can be challenging sometimes to do that, but it can be done. And you know why it can be done? Because you and I and everyone else have been created in the image of God. Do you realize what that means? It means that there is a goodness in us. There's goodness in Amelia King and Christine Darling and Shane McInerney and Judge Alexis Crott. You just have to keep nurturing and nourishing that goodness with the love from above. The love that came to dwell among us full of grace and truth. The love that laid down its life for us. That love is what makes it possible to do what Harold Reese did many years ago. Anyone recognize the name? Most people actually know Harold Reese by his nickname, Pee Wee. Pee Wee Reese was a professional baseball player for the old Brooklyn Dodgers. He played shortstop. One of his teammates was Jackie Robinson. And as you probably know, Jackie Robinson was the first black man to play in the major leagues. As you also probably know, when he broke Major League Baseball's color barrier, he was subjected to a lot of abuse. That abuse was constant. It was everywhere. It was so bad that a baseball writer by the name of Ginny Cannon once said, that Jackie Robinson is the loneliest man I've ever met in sports. A lot of the abuse came from players on other teams. There were pitchers who actually bragged about throwing the baseball at Jackie Robinson's head. Some of the abuse came from players on his own team. When they found out that Jackie Robinson was going to be called up from the minor leagues, 
they circulated a petition that made it very clear that they would not play on the same team with him and they wanted to be traded. A lot of the abuse came from the fans. That abuse was particularly vociferous and vicious one day when the Brooklyn Dodgers were in Cincinnati to play the Reds. By the way, Pee Wee Reese didn't sign that petition. He refused to sign it. And it killed the petition. Pee Wee Reese also remembered very well what happened that day in Cincinnati. Many years later, he said this in an interview. I looked over at Jackie standing alone, looking so sad, so vulnerable. Something in my gut reacted. Maybe I was thinking of the hanging tree back in Brandenburg where I grew up. I remember my dad pointing to a long branch and telling me black men had been lynched from it. As a little boy, it made a terrible impression on me that people would do things like that just on account of skin color. Something about the unfairness of it all, the injustice, I don't know. But I stepped over to the pitcher, called a timeout, and walked over to Jackie. I said something consoling. Then reaching up, as you may remember, Pee Wee Reese was short. That's how we got the nickname. Reaching up, I put my hand on his shoulder and just stood there looking at the crowd. The jeering stopped like someone turning off a loud radio. And then we began doing what we had gone there to do, play ball. Good people, my sisters and brothers, all of this is why we need more people to do exactly what you're doing right now. It's why we need as many people as possible to follow God's Holy Son so that we can put an end to these childish ways and love one another as he loves us. Amen.
People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen. Shalom to